This video is brought to you by Pitaka. Today, we're comparing the Apple iPhone 15 versus the Samsung Galaxy S23. Now, as a tech content creator, this is probably the most dangerous video uh, that I can make, but I have extensively used each of these phones, and today I'm gonna to talk about the differences uh, and similarities between these two great phones to ultimately help you decide which is best for you. But first, I am doing a giveaway on this brand new iPhone 15 Pro. And if you want a chance to win, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and comment your favorite feature of the iPhone 15 or the S23, uh, along with your Instagram username, and then follow me on Instagram at the Schiddeboom, where I'll announce the winner on the 31st of October. All right, so to start, let's compare the prices. Now in the US, both the iPhone 15 uh, as well as the S23 with 128 gigabytes come in at $799. However, here in the UK, the iPhone 15 is actually 50 pounds less. Now both phones use an aluminum uh, and glass design and the iPhone 15 here in barely blue, uh, I mean blue, has a matte glass back, which is actually a big improvement over the shiny glass uh, on the previous iPhone 14. Additionally, uh, the matte aluminum frame, while it is still flat, has slight rounded edges going around and this makes the phone uh, feel much less squared off and more comfortable to hold in the hand. Now the S23 uh, also has a really great matte glass back and does an equally great job at resisting fingerprints uh, but has a polished aluminum frame and this adds a bit of contrast to the design but at the same time does attract fingerprints uh, and scratches more easily compared to the cleaner look of the matte finish on the iPhone 15. While I would describe both phones uh, as being comfortable in the hand and particularly the iPhone 15 has come a long way in this area uh, but compared to the much sharper predecessor uh, and designs before that. Comparing the two side by side, the S23 is still more comfortable uh, than the iPhone 15 is. And this is thanks to the fact that the frame is curved all around, not just by the edges. So as a result, it really rests effortlessly in your palm. And the S23 is also ever so slightly narrower and this helps uh, with one-handed usability. Looking at the back of the phones, the iPhone 15 has a dual lens camera module where the S23 has a triple lens camera system. Now, don't worry, I have an in-depth camera comparison coming very soon. Uh, this is actually an area where these phones are very different. Uh, but in the meantime, in terms of the design, I would say both look good in their own ways but the S23 does have a raised ring uh, going around each of the lenses and this will result in better lens protection uh, and also has much less table wobble when compared to the iPhone 15. I mean, have a listen. Here's the S23 and the iPhone 15. Big difference. The iPhone 15 weighs in at 171 grams compared to the S23's 168 grams. Now this difference uh, is not noticeable and I would describe both phones as feeling solid in the hand without being heavy. Uh, both are also IP68 certified, which means you don't have to worry about using them in the rain, uh, which if you live in London like me is an essential feature. Ultimately, these are both good looking uh, and well-made phones, but from a design perspective, overall, I prefer the look and the even more comfortable feel in the hand of the S23. Let's talk displays. Now the iPhone 15 and the S23 both have 6.1 inch displays, which is of course that perfect balance between usability uh, while still giving a relatively large screen size. And I found both screens to be very crack resistant, but they do scratch easily. Uh, so whichever you choose, do be sure to get a good screen protector. And I'll be sure to leave my recommended screen protector for both phones down in the description. Now back to the displays themselves, both are OLED. Uh, and this means that colors are really vibrant. Uh, details like finer text are also sharp, whether you're watching videos, editing photos, sending messages, going through emails, all looks great on both of these displays. But there are some key differences. Out of the box, the colors on the iPhone 15 are more neutral uh, compared to the more saturated look that we get on the S23. Plus, the up to 2000 nit uh, display on the iPhone 15 is noticeably brighter when compared to the 1200 nit display on the S23. And this is a difference that does show when you're out in the sun. However, the biggest difference between these two displays is the refresh rate. Now, the S23 has a 120 hertz refresh rate, which is double that of the iPhone 15's 60 hertz. And this means that any movement on screen, whether you're scrolling, uh, swiping, will all appear extra smooth on the S23. Now, how big of a deal is this really? Well, here's how I see it. I think if you're not already used to 120 hertz, uh, the 60 hertz display on the iPhone 15 will be fine. However, once you do get used to that extra smooth nature of the 120 hertz, your eyes have a funny way of adjusting, uh, and this makes the 60 hertz display feel just a bit choppy. 
At the end of the day, for $800, Apple should have done better in the refresh rate department. They should add the 120 hertz refresh rate to all iPhones, not just the pros. Overall, side by side, uh, the display on the S23 is better. Another big difference between these two phones is the approach to the front camera. Now the iPhone 15 uh, has the dynamic island and this is a useful way to quickly see app info uh, or switch between open apps. But this does of course take up more screen space uh, when compared to the very minimalistic pinhole camera of the S23. Now to be fair, the dynamic island does of course house Face ID, which is by far the most reliable face unlock in any phone. At the same time though, the S23 has that under screen uh, fingerprint sensor, which which is great too. Which do I prefer? Well, honestly, both. Uh, I like the added features of the Dynamic Island, but the effortless integration of that underscreen fingerprint sensor is great too. I'll give this category a tie. Now, before we talk about uh, the camera performance and longevity, some of the areas where these two phones actually differ the most, let me show you this fantastic line of aramid fiber cases for the iPhone 15 series from Pitaka. This is the Mag Ease 4. It comes in 100% biodegradable packaging and is available for all iPhone 15 models. And the first thing that stood out to me with these cases uh, is just how incredibly thin and light they are. Now they come in two versions. Uh, there is the 1500D version as well as the 600D version. And the 600D is the thinnest of the two, coming in at just 0.95 millimeters and weighing just 17 grams. These cases add practically no bulk to your phone, giving that satisfying caseless feeling while still protecting from day-to-day -day wear. And this is possible thanks to the fact that the Mag Ease 4 is made from durable and lightweight aramid fiber. And not only does this look sleek, the pattern itself actually adds some grip uh, and feels great in the hand. Now the Mag Ease 4 comes in a range of designs and my favorite uh, is this Milky Way Galaxy. And Pitaka have created these designs by weaving color directly into the aramid fiber through a process called fusion weaving. And if you look closely, uh, you can actually see the texture as well as the depth in the case. And this adds a really unique look and it is this process that allows for these awesome designs. I also appreciate the metal ring going around the camera unit for added lens protection and of course the Maggie's 4 is fully MagSafe compatible. I think the Maggie's 4 adds an element of understated elegance to your iPhone 15 and to learn more be sure to head to the links in the description. Now, one of the areas where the iPhone 15 and the Galaxy S23 differ the most is in the cameras. The iPhone 15 has a dual lens camera system, which thanks to the new 48 megapixel main sensor does now enable a 2X telephoto lens, effectively offering three focal lengths with just two lenses. By comparison, the S23 has a triple lens camera system, including a 3X telephoto lens. Now let's analyze some real world examples taken straight out of the camera. In general, I found the S23 to show more vibrant colors, as seen here, looking at the color samples on the wall. However, I do find that on the S23, the predominant color in the frame often impacts the color of the entire photo. For example, here, the red in the stairs affects the colors on my face as well as the blue sky, applying a reddish hue, where you don't get this on the iPhone 15, which does a better job separating these areas and producing a more true to life image overall. And here again, we see how on the S23, the blue tint from the glass is applied to the floor and even to my outfit. By comparison, the iPhone 15 lights these more accurately and retains more texture and detail in the floor. While I personally prefer the way the iPhone lit my face with more accurate skin tones uh, and depth, there is something to be said for the brighter, perhaps more social media ready look of the S23. Let me know in the comments which you prefer. In all lenses, the iPhone 15 has noticeably more dynamic range, especially in darker settings, retaining more detail where the S23 starts to show more noise. When it comes to the main lens, the most important lens, the iPhone 15 pulls ahead consistently with more detail. Check out the leaves in this photo, the fine text in the bottle, and lastly, the tracks and surrounding signs. However, when comparing the 3X telephoto on the S23 to the 2X telephoto on the iPhone 15, the S23 is sharper, looking closely at the boat in the distance uh, or here at the edges on the leaf. Now, the selfie cameras on both are great. The S23 is slightly sharper, but also applies some skin smoothing, which you may or may not like. Interestingly, on the selfie camera, I found the S23 to do a better job with skin tones, making the iPhone look a bit bright. Though often the S23 does push the saturation a bit too much, like here where my face is too warm. Both phones shoot very stable video. However, the iPhone outperforms the S23 with better colors, sharpness, dynamic range, and has a more shallow depth of field and also more smoothly adjusts to changes in exposure and focus. 
When it comes to deciding what makes a good photo, there is an element of personal preference involved. However, the iPhone 15's camera system is objectively better when it comes to retaining details, showing more dynamic range, as well as how it lights individual parts of the image, resulting in better photos and videos overall. As for whether you prefer the more true to life look of the iPhone 15 or the more vibrant uh, and smoothed out look of the S23 is up to you. Me as a content creator, I prefer the more accurate and true to life image of the iPhone 15. All things considered, overall, the iPhone 15 wins this category. Now, as someone who runs their own business, I use my phone uh, for too many hours each day, so battery life here is crucial. And thankfully, both the S23 uh, as well as the iPhone 15 offer strong battery life. I would say I typically get around seven hours or so of screen on time, which translates to around a full work day and evening of use, with say around 20% or so remaining uh, when I charge each night. Now, both phones also finally support USB-C, looking at you, Apple, uh, and the S23 does actually support slightly faster charging, comparing 25 watts versus 20 watts on the iPhone 15. And the S23 also supports re uh, reverse wireless charging for things like your Galaxy Buds. On the other hand though, the iPhone 15 does support MagSafe, which means your phone uh, automatically aligns on the wireless charger and lets you use accessories like wallets and stands. In terms of battery life, both here are great and I think each add their own unique features when it comes to charging. So overall, uh, I consider this category a tie. But what about performance and reliability? Well, both the iPhone 15's uh, A16 Bionic chip and the S23 Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, Gen 2 chip optimized for Galaxy, too long of a name, uh, perform really well here. In fact, in day-to-day -day performance, whether you're launching apps, uh, switching between apps, or editing photos, even gaming, both keep up really well and deliver true flagship performance. Now, iPhones have been this way for years, but on the S23 compared to the previous S22, you actually get much less random lags and stutters thanks to better optimization and this overall result in a more refined experience uh, compared to previous years. Still, on the iPhone, Apple makes both the hardware and the software, and this means you get an unmatched level of integration. Ultimately, the experience on the iPhone is still more fluid and cohesive overall especially when you take into account how well the iPhone integrates into the broader Apple ecosystem. At $800, these phones are big investments and they should last. Now, iPhones have been known to last uh, for many years and I would expect the iPhone 15 to get another five to six years of software support and updates. Now, by comparison, uh, Samsung has been improving in this area, offering four years of software support and five years of security updates for the S23. Now, it is catching up to Apple, but you still get more years of support on the iPhone 15, meaning it will ultimately last longer. Plus, it will also hold its value better, meaning that in the future, you'll get more money back if you choose to sell it and upgrade. So at the end of the day, which of these two phones is best? Well, in terms of the design and the feel in the hand, this goes to the S23, and the same can be said for the display. However, when it comes to the camera, uh, this goes to the iPhone 15. Now, both phones deliver good battery life, so this is a tie. Uh, and when it comes to performance, longevity, and value retention, this too goes to the iPhone 15. So to sum this up, we can see that both phones have their own unique advantages. And from this, I can say that the S23 is best for content consumption, where the iPhone 15 is better for content creation. But there is still one category left, and that is operating system. Now, I can make a whole video on its own about this subject. Uh, let me know, by the way, if you'd like to see it. But what it comes down to ultimately is this iOS is still the more stable and smooth to use operating system, where Android allows for more customization uh, and freedom when it comes to apps. As I said at the start of this video, these are both truly great phones and you can't go wrong with either. What I would do is I would look at the categories that we explore today, then choose which are most important to you, and then check to see which phone best aligns with your preference to make your buying decision. Which would I choose? Well, for me as a content creator who is really deep in the Apple ecosystem with my AirPods, uh, also with my Apple Watch, and who uses his phone both for work as well as personal use, reliability is key. And that is why for me, the iPhone 15 with iOS is the better choice. However, I do recognize that the iPhone 15 in this case is newer than the S23. So I am curious to see what Samsung will offer with their upcoming S24, which I'll be sure to compare to the iPhone 15 as well. So be sure to subscribe to not miss that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any questions at all. If you haven't seen them yet, I highly suggest watching my recent iPhone 15 review as well as my long-term review of the S23. Thank you so much for watching and take care.